Welcome to analyze the relationship between two quantitative variables, more specifically focusing on that least squares regression line. So in this video, we're going to tackle how to actually find the least squares regression line. We, we've, we've introduced you to, we've talked a lot about it, we know what it does, but how do you get it? All right, so in this video, it's really best if I can explain it with an example. So example we're going to look at is 16 Ford F-150 4x4 Super Crew trucks that were for sale. We looked at the explanatory variable, the miles on each truck, the response variable is the price of each truck. We've been scatter plot, looks very negative, pretty linear, very strong. The more miles on a truck, the lower the price. So the question now is, all right. I want to put a least squares regression line. I want to put a line of best fit. I want to put a linear model, call it whatever you want, but I want to put a line through this data. All right, I don't just do it. I got to be very scientific about it. I need to find the best line. So how do I do it? Well, I'm going to give you three options, and I'm actually going to talk about a fourth. All right, now they're all numbered 111 because there is no order. There's not one that's better than the other, but they're just three different methods. And again, I'm going to add a fourth as well at the end. All right, number one is everybody's favorite. And I will say that honestly, on 90% of exams, whether it be in class or um, on the AP exam, if you watch this for AP statistics, they will straight up give you the linear regression model. Like they'll just tell it to you. Like no one's gonna make you guess, they'll just give it to you. Second, again, I'm labeling it number one because it's not better or worse, it's just different, is using the data, literally like doing it by hand, doing the math, right? Those, they're numbers. Numbers come from doing math. So the numbers you need, you need the correlation between your two variables are, you're going to need the mean of all of your x's, the mean of all of your y's, the standard deviation of all of your x's, the standard deviation of all of your y's, and then you could use some formulas that I'm going to teach you in this video to find the slope and y-intercept by hand. Like this is the one where you're going to literally get your hands dirty and do some math work. Definitely takes the longest. I'm not going to lie. But it does come up on maybe a multiple choice, maybe a free response where they're going to make you actually calculate the least squares regression line by hand. So I'll walk you through that as well. And then the third, again, I'm listing at number one because it's not any better than the others is using what something is called a computer regression output table. Now listen, I'm actually going to be honest with you. At the end of this, I'm going to show you what a computer regression output table is. It's actually no different than me just giving you the model. It's just a little bit different. But the only one of these options that gets you dirty, is going to drive you insane, <laughs> is the middle one where you got to actually do the work. So let's first talk about option, well, the first option at the top. I just give it to you. So here is that beautiful red line of best fit, linear regression model, least squares regression line, and I'm in maybe in a really good mood, so I just give you the equation of the line. There it is. Give it to you, free of charge. The y-intercept is 38,257. The slope is negative 0.1629. There it is. Easy. Now you just have to go ahead and use it. So much fun. Okay. Once you're given the line, what could you do? You could use it to make predictions. You could use it to find residual values. You could interpret the slope. You could interpret the y-intercept. All that fun stuff that we've been learning. Okay, that's easy. I give it to you. Everyone loves that. Here's the second one. Got to do the work by hand. All right, so here it is. Here's to actually find the A, the y-intercept, and the B, the slope, by hand. First off, you need all of your data because you need to use all of your data to calculate R, to calculate the average of the X's, the average of the Y's, the standard deviation of all the X's, the standard deviation of all the Y's. All right, now hopefully you're gonna use a calculator or some type of computer program that could do all that for you because that doing that by hand would make these problems even longer. All right, so you do have to find B first, even though I know it goes out of alphabetical order, whatever. You gotta find B first. So how to find B, it's very simple. You take the correlation R, you multiply it by the standard deviation of y divided by the standard deviation of x. So that is actually the mathematical formula of where the slope comes from. It is the correlation r times the standard deviation of y divided by the standard deviation of x. So if your correlation is positive, your slope will be positive. If your correlation is negative, your slope will be negative, and that makes complete and utter sense. All right, then you're going to move on to finding a, the y-intercept. To find a, you're going to take your average y, and you're going to subtract 
the slope, which is why you have to find it first, times the average x. So you do the slope times your average x, and then y, the average y, minus that value of the slope times the average x. Okay, so again, you do have to get your hands dirty here because you got to do some math, but let's actually show you how that is done. All right, so on the left-hand side here, I have all of my information. I have all of the different trucks, all of the X's, all of the different mileages, all of the Y's, all of the different prices. At the bottom here, I went ahead and found the average for the X's, that's the miles, the average for the Y's, that's the price, the standard deviations for the X and the Y, and our correlation value R. Now, it's super important that you got five values here. Boy, if you put the wrong value in the wrong place, you're going to have it completely wrong. So really take the time to organize your data. Make sure you know who are my X's, who are my Y's, and all that fun stuff. So here I go. All right, you got to find the slope first. The slope is taking the correlation, negative 0.8150, times the standard deviation of the Y. Take your time. Standard deviation of the Y. Look at your table, 9570.42. Now, I'm going to be honest. I didn't do that by hand. I used the calculator to find that. Divided by the standard deviation of the X. X four seven eight seven six point eight three. Okay, then you're going to go to your calculator and you're going to type that in. Neg sorry for my messy handwriting. Negative point eight one five zero times the standard deviation of y, 9570.42, divided by the standard deviation of the x's, 4786.83, and hit enter. And I get, guess what? Negative. 0.162, boy, oh boy, 29. Now, there's a lot more decimals there. Um, I recommend at least three, but obviously more than three is even better. So again, go back to the problem where I said, hey, here it is. It don't, it don't do any work. And that was the right slope, negative 0.1629. All right, now for the y-intercept, A. So I'm going to take the average y. The average y was 27. 833.69 minus the slope we just found, negative 0.1629, times the average x, 63979.50. So really take your time there. Again, I know my messy handwriting doesn't help writing with this pen. I'm sorry. So again, I'm going to go straight to my calculator. I'm literally going to type that in exactly, 27833. 0.69 minus negative 0.1629. Obviously, I know those two negatives are going to make a positive, so you can do a positive if you want, but 0.1629 times 63979.50. Hit enter, and I get 338,255.9. Now, you might be like, okay, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's actually not exactly what I gave you over here when I just gave you the y-intercept. It was 38257. I'm getting 38255. Okay. Can we agree that it's first, it's really close, 0.38256, if I would round that to a whole number, is pretty darn close to 38257. Why is it not exactly the same thing? Well, I rounded the slope, and then I used that rounded number right here. And actually, my Y average was probably a little bit rounded. My X average was probably a little bit rounded. So if I was using like a computer that didn't do any rounding, it kept every number with a million decimals, then I would get much, much more exact to what it should be. But again, it's not the end of the world, right? It's, you're only off by a teeny, teeny bit, and it is what it is. And I'm doing it by hand. When you do it by hand, you get a little messy. You end up having to round things a little bit. But that's it. And then you just got to put it all together at the end. The average Y, excuse me, not the average Y, the predicted Y is 38255.951 minus 0.1629X. Then I can ask you to use this equation to make predictions, find residuals, interpret the slope, interpret the y-intercept, all that fun stuff. All right. The third way that you could get the least squares regression line is with what's called a computer output analysis table or a computer regression analysis, right? This is the same thing as me just giving it to you. Now, let me explain this to you. 
So what this is, is imagine a computer program where you dump all of your X data in, you dump all of your Y data in, you click a button, and it calculates everything, and it spits it out at you, and it spits it out at you in a table. Now, in this table, there's lots of things you don't need. You don't need p-value yet. You don't need t-value yet. That's going to be later, 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 later on. We don't need SE. In fact, the only thing we need is right here, the very, very first column, and they go in alphabetical order, A on top of B. There it is. There's your A value, 382571.135, and there's my B value, negative 0.1629. So again, Notice that those are exactly the same. Well, not exactly. They're close. But remember, it's all about a rounding. Those are the same A and B value I gave you way back over here when I was super nice and just gave you the equation. But technically, this is no different. I'm just giving it to you in what's called a table. And I know there's lots of numbers in this table, but the only numbers you need to focus on are the very first column in alphabetical order, A and then B. It's that unbelievably simple. Then you could build the line. Y hat equals 38,257.135 minus 0.1629x. It's that easy. Now, I do want to briefly talk about this right here. Most of these tables give you R squared. R squared is 0.6642. Now, what is R squared? Well, it's literally R squared. So if you want to find R, all you got to do is take the square root. And if you grab a calculator, the square root. And I know I'm only using four decimals. Use more, it'll be a little bit more exact. But the square root of 0.6642 is 0.815, my correlation. Now, the only thing that you do need to understand here is because my slope is negative, that means my line is going down, that means my data is going down, which means my correlation needs to be negative. When you take the square root, your calculator is always going to give you a positive. You need to realize that this is a negative relationship, which you probably saw in the scatter plot anyway, and that's why we need to attack on the negative in front of that R value. So again, um, I have taught you in previous videos how to find correlation through formulas, through different websites, or even through your calculator, but sometimes the correlation is just given to you, and maybe it's given to you as R squared, but gosh, all you got to do is take the square root of it to get R, and there will be more videos coming out where we'll talk about actually what R squared is, but anyway, that's it. The only other number given in these computer output tables that you will need right now is S, and we'll talk about that in a later video as well, but these other columns you will not need. So, a computer output table is no different than me just giving you the numbers you need. All you have to know is where to look. First column, alphabetical order, A first, that's the wider set, the B underneath it, that's the slope. Boom, you're done. You got your equation. Now, what can you do with this equation? Uh, I don't know. Use it to make predictions, um, find residual values, um, interpret the slope intercept, uh, interpret the slope and the Y intercept. I mean... It, it's pretty simple stuff. Hopefully you're starting to agree. But how do I get that formula for the line that we put through our data called the least squares regression line? I give it to you. I make you do some work to find it with the formulas, which are on the AP cheat sheet. Or I give you one of these computer output tables, which is no different than me just giving you A and B so you can create the line. All right, that's it for this video on how to find the least squares regression line.